Hi, my name is Sarmad, and today I want to talk to you about AI Config. AI Config is a source control friendly way to do AI application development. It's a JSON serializable format that allows you to save the prompts, model parameters, and which models you're using separately from your application code, which dramatically simplifies the application code itself, but also allows you to source control prompts and model parameters as config files. It allows you to evaluate and monitor the generative AI parts of your application separately from the rest of your application. And as we'll see in a moment, it allows you to iterate and experiment with generative AI much more quickly than what's possible today. So let's just get started. The first thing I want to show you is this notebook-like interface called an AI workbook that allows you to experiment with a series of prompts, model settings, and chain things together. So in this case, for example, I want to plan a trip to New York and let's ask ChatGPT some fun things to do in, in New York City. And maybe I can just say uh, fun, let's just change it. Uh, maybe I can add a system prompt about you are an expert travel agent. And as you can see, it's very simple to iterate on this. It's like a playground. Uh, that you would expect for generative AI. And it's giving me what I expect, a couple of things. I live in New York, and so I can tell you these are pretty good suggestions. Uh, but now let's say I want to order these activities into an itinerary that I can follow. And so you'll see a couple of things here that we've done. One, this was using chat GPT, but we can try a different model here. In this case, let's try GPT-4. And you'll see these handlebar syntax parameters that are being passed in. So in this case, this prompt is saying generate an itinerary ordered by some parameter for the set of activities that we just generated. And you can see that this cell, this prompt has a name, we called it get activities. And so we can just reference the output of that, which is this by doing get activities output here. Uh, and similarly, this is a parameter. And if we open the parameters tab, we can say geographic location or uh, duration, uh, some of, one of these things, and we can just try running this. And what it, this is doing is a fairly complex flow. It's using two different models, ChatGPT and GPT-4, and it's piping the output of one into the other and also allowing you to parameterize the, the prompt. So you have a, a prompt template essentially. And now it tried this out. I It shows that it's ordered by duration, which seems good. Now let's try geographic location. And the nice thing about the, this notebook interface is not only does it allow me to chain things together, but it also allows me to very quickly see the impact of the changes I want to uh, set up uh, without me needing to bootstrap my entire application code. So at this point, it, I feel relatively happy with this, uh, with this prompt chain. So let's go ahead and we can download this as an AI config. And so I have this open in my collab here. So let me just jump. If I go here, I can see that this is my New York City trip planner. Uh, and this looks very much like a config file. And uh, it do doesn't contain the outputs that I had because that's my experimentation environment. But it contains all the settings that I had set up. And now I can use this in my application code uh, very easily. So let's let's try that out. Uh, so first, I just have to import the Python AI config package. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, and make sure to specify your OpenAI API key. We're only using OpenAI models here, but uh, AI config is model agnostic and it is multimodal, and so it can work with Dali three. It can work with Llama two, Palm, and we're gonna be adding other model support uh, pretty soon as well. And so I can just load this as a file. Uh, I can also load this directly as a JSON object, but uh, we can start with this file that we've downloaded. Uh, and then let's just try running the prompt. And you can see that all I have to do to actually run the prompt that we had here, uh, this one, uh, is to do config.run and specify the prompt name. And if I do that here, you can see that it's streaming works out of the box. Uh, it's working uh, also with that, without us having to specify any of the complex setup that you have to do 
uh, to invoke the OpenAI API. And if I had selected a different model provider like Palm, my application code is still going to be exactly this, config.run. Uh, and AI config kind of abstracts away the, the complexity of which model provider to invoke and how to do that from the application. Uh, the other prompt we had was this prompt chain for gen itinerary, which as you can see here, it's uh, again referencing the output of the previous prompt. And this prompt, uh, this is the gen itinerary is a GPT-4 prompt and get activities is a GPT-3.5 prompt. Uh, and so we can run this and you can notice there's a run with dependencies set to true here. What this would do is it would first run all the dependencies. So in this case, it will first run get activities uh, and take the output of that and pipe that into the this prompt for gen itinerary and then run this prompt. And if you had specified this to false, it will use the output that it already produced from the previous run uh, to execute uh, the gen itinerary prompt. Uh, the other thing you'll notice here is I specified this callback manager here. This allows you to really see in depth what's going on under the covers in AI config and all the functions that get called, how data gets serialized, uh, transformed, uh, how the APIs get invoked for the actual model providers. All of that is possible by adding these callback events. And you can hook this up to any of your monitoring platforms that you use. So in this case, let's just run this. And now you'll see, I, because I have the callback manager specified, I get a lot more events as, in addition to the streaming outputs. Uh, and in this case, you'll also notice it first ran the get activities prompt here. So this is the first one. Uh, and now it's running the gen itinerary prompt with the output of the previous one. Uh, and in this case, you can also see that in this case, the content contains a system prompt here. The messages contain the system prompt as well as the, the prompt uh, here. And you'll notice that it replaced the order by but with duration and it replaced the activities, the get activities dot output with the actual output that was produced from the get activities prompt. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is how you can add a prompt programmatically. We showed an AI workbook, which allows you to very quickly iterate on these prompts with a visual interface, uh, but you can also do it programmatically with the AI config SDK. So in this case, I can actually, let's say I wanna generate a packing list for my, for my trip. Uh, and so I can very easily just specify the data that I would generally pass into OpenAI here. Uh, so this is the messages array and the, I specify a system prompt here, uh, as well as a, a prompt for what should I bring to this location? You can see that I've parameterized this already in here, uh, and I can just call config.serialize. And what serialize does is it takes the model that you've specified, in this case, GPT 3.5 Turbo, and it uses that to figure out how to transform this data that you've passed it, which is the OpenAI uh, data format, into the AI config serialized format. So all you have to do is call serialize and give it a prompt name. You can even save parameters alongside it. So in this case, this is this parameter is defaulted to NYC. Uh, and so let's just add this prompt by config.add prompt uh, with the data we got back from serialize, and then we can run it. Uh, so let's just try this again. And I still have the logger just to show folks what's going on under the covers. Uh, I changed the params, if you'll notice, in the config.run for the location to Chicago, uh, even though the default was New York City. And so I, it realizes it, it has respected that parameter here. Uh, and you can also see from the logs what exactly it's sending to OpenAI here. Uh, and finally, what I want to show you is being able to save the config. You can even save it with outputs here. So let's just run this. All you have to do is do config.save. If you just did config.save like this, it would just save the existing AI config uh, that you had loaded, which was travel.aiconfig.json. But in this case, just to show what is going on, let's just uh, have a separate config here. And you'll see that the prompts not only contain the inputs, but now they also contain the outputs that we had generated as part of this execution. 
Uh, and so you have the get activities prompt, you have the gen itinerary. You also notice that uh, the prompts are still parameterized here, which is really valuable to allow you to pass data into the AI config from your application. Uh, and so to, right now we had just set order by to a static value like duration, uh, but you can imagine building an app where order by is a drop down that a user selects. And based on that, you pipe the right kind of information into the prompt uh, at runtime. Uh, and finally, we also had added a packing list prompt. And so you can see that's been saved here. The default parameter is also saved here. Uh, and you'll also notice that uh, it has transformed the OpenAI messages array uh, and the, the data we passed into OpenAI uh, over here into this uh, kind of uh, AI config serialized format. So that's all for getting started. There's a lot more you can do with AI config. We have a whole set of cookbooks that we've created for you to try out. Uh, you can try function calling with OpenAI. You can try building a CLI uh, bot for uh, helping your, with your code base. You can build a basic chat bot. Uh, other advanced techniques like retrieval augmented generation of passing data in to the prompt context is possible with AI config. Uh, and then we also have some uh, specific uh, cookbooks for models like Llama and, and Google's Palm as well. Uh, so give it a try. Let us know what you think and, and um, happy coding.